Hello everyone, my name is Salah Ramlawi, I'm part of the TME team and today we're going to be talking about Fortinet's SD branch solution. Before jumping into the demo, I want to take a couple of minutes to talk about today's digital landscape and how Fortinet's solution applies to it. The industry as a whole has been witnessing a digital transformation. Various companies are adopting a work from anywhere protocol. We are seeing an IoT revolution with millions of IoT devices popping up in various networks. Gartner mentions that the IT services for the IoT market is going to hit $58 billion by 2025. At the same time, different companies from different verticals are starting to appreciate cloud adoption. Gartner does mention as well that 70% of companies have already migrated some of their workloads to the cloud. Now all of this introduces a new set of challenges whether in regards to network agility or tightening the security gaps that, might ar that may arise from it. Gardner has been talking about the cybersecurity mesh architecture lately. However, this has been Fortinet's bread and butter since day one. The Fortinet security fabric story talks about a broad set of devices, a broad set of product line that are integrated with one, with one another share telemetry, share threat intelligence, and also we have automation added to it so we can autonomously and in real time respond to threats and network disruptions to maintain business continuity. Now funneling down to the branch, the branch became more agile very quickly. Workers are not going into the office anymore. They are working from home, from cafes, from different places. There's also BYOD, there's also a lot of IoT devices being introduced to the network. So that alone is complex enough for network administrators to be able to cope with all the changes. At the same time, all of these new devices, all of these workers that are always on the go, expose a lot of security gaps. And all of this, of course, is going to take time and money. With Fortinet's solution, we are able to tackle the security gaps, tackle the agility problem through our security fabric story. And also we maintain a low TCO, definitely in comparison to the other vendors out there, because we don't require additional licenses, whether it is for the switches or for the APs that are connected to the FortiGate itself. Gartner has named us a leader for the network firewall and for the WAN edge magic quadrants, and we are also a visionary in the wired and wireless LAN magic quadrant. However, if you take a deeper look into it, you're seeing we are tiptoeing at the border of the leadership quadrant, and our friends at Cisco for the past few years have been going down in the quadrant, and they're going to be almost going to be visionary, so we are basically neck and neck over there. Now let's jump into the demo itself. In today's demo, we're going to be talking about a typical branch deployment where you have a firewall, a switch, an AP, and some servers or devices connected either to the switch or to the AP. So let's start. So this is the GUI of the FortiGate where you can use the same screen to manage your firewall, your switch, your AP, and all of the end devices connected to them. Starting with the physical topology is always a powerful way of displaying all the elements interconnected together. At the same time, it gives you the option of reacting or adding some certain configuration to the devices on the same screen itself. So for example, I can hover over, for example, the switch and I can get a bit more information about it. I can open the tools and the diagnostics and tools window and do some troubleshooting on the spot if there is anything that needs to be done. Also through the device identification feature that we have, we are able to identify the devices that are connected to the network and very similar, if I hover over them, I can get a bit more information about them. What is that device, the IP, what is the hardware and the OS that is running on it. I can also add firewall rules to the device itself, quarantine the host, ban the IP. Okay, so switching over from the topology, let's look at the dashboard. 
The dashboard contains several widgets that are pre-built into the GUI itself, but you can also create your own custom dashboards, just like what I did over here. This one is called LAN Clients, where you can tell about all the servers and all of the users that are connected to the branch at any given time. At the same time, you can also, for example, hover or go into one of the widgets and it can give you a bit more information about exactly who those devices are. Similar through to the security fabric physical topology view, you can, for example, hover over, there's an unidentified object over here or device. You can hover over it and choose to quarantine that host temporarily up until you understand who that device is and what they're doing. If you right click on any device as well, you can add a firewall policy, add a NAC policy, for example, through our built-in 40 OS, we have now NAC functionality. NAC functionality in a branch is very important and very convenient. Oftentimes you'll have a, a switch connected somewhere in the branch, you'll have a bunch of servers connected to them, and uh, maybe someone who is less technical wants to do some troubleshooting just simply by power cycling something. So they will unplug the cable, plug it back in, and instead of, let's say, plugging it into port 10, which is dedicated for that server, they plug it into port 11, for example. Well, through NAC functionality, you can actually mitigate this problem because the 40 OS will be able to tell what is the MAC address, what is the OS of this device, and automatically assign a VLAN to that device to make sure that they always belong to the desired network. Okay, so now once the firewall is up, the first thing that you want to do is configure the interfaces. So we'll go to the network interfaces section over here where we can see a couple of uh, WAN interfaces. We have an SD-WAN feature added to this. Any SSID that you create on the AP will also appear as an interface over here. Now, since this is an SD branch solution, we need to talk about FortiLink. FortiLink is a Fortinet proprietary protocol that is that allows switches and APs to seamlessly integrate with the FortiGate and also host or advertise their connected hosts. So in this example or in this demo, we have port A of the FortiGate dedicated to the switch. Now, since this is an SD branch solution, we obviously also have some uh, SD1 configuration added. Very simple in this one, we have a virtual link that has two uplinks. We've created a couple of SD1 or a few SD1 rules depending on the type of uh, traffic. So for this one, we have a rule for Microsoft applications, a rule for Dropbox, a rule for inventory management applications. And for each one of those SD1 rules, we have a corresponding performance SLA. Performance SLAs are very important for the navigation of application traffic to make sure that the application is always traversing the most optimum path, depending on the SLA criteria that we give it. Any time a path is crossing the threshold, you will see it will be in red like this. So for this specific SLA, we said that our target is 3 milliseconds, and right now we are seeing a latency of 17 milliseconds. All right, so now after defining the interfaces, you can simply plug in your switch to the 40 gate through port A that has the 40 link on it, and then the switch will identify itself right away. So going into the manage switches, once the switch is connected to the 40 gate, it will introduce itself, and then the 40 gate will be able to identify this as a 40 switch. And then you will have the ability to either authorize or deauthorize the device if for whatever reason you think that this is a rogue device. Now, as soon as the device is authorized, now you have full control of that switch through the 40 gate GUI, where you can create some VLANs and attach them to ports. So for example, in this example, we have a switch with a few VLANs connected to it. Now we have a server 
that is typically in any branch deployment you're going to have a, re a remote server applied for example in this situation this remote server will gather some data and send it to some uh, inventory management site whether it is being hosted in the cloud or in the central location so in this case we've created a vlan called remote server and we've added some extra security to it anyone who logs into that server will be redirected to a captive portal and they can only browse the internet or access something over the internet if they enter their credentials and they are part of the employees user group and this user group we have two people john and jane once the vlan is created you can add it to any 40 switch port so in this case we've added that vlan the remote server vlan to port 10 and now the remote server is connected to the switch through port 10 we can also see a bit more characteristics of that device itself very similar for the ap now once the ap is connected to the switch through 40 link the ap is able to introduce itself to the 40 gate and the 40 gate has the option of authorizing or do you authorizing this device hovering over you can see that the ap is connected to the switch on port 19 the switch is providing poe to that to the ap and this is the ap right there very similar story once the ap is connected it will be found under the managed 40 ap's on the 40 gate again you have the option of authorizing or deauthorizing the device and at the same time similar to creating interfaces on the switch you can create ssids for the ap now in this situation we have two ssids created one for the employees of the company which we called acme employees and another one for guests they could be customers they could be clients coming in and connecting to the wi-fi where we have a guest wi-fi portal as well now finally after after configuring everything plugging everything into the 40 gate defining your interfaces now we can start to talk about security uh, the uh, the the firewall rules in this situation we have three firewall rules created two for the ap and one for the network behind the switch so any guest who logs into the guest wi-fi will be able to browse the internet but there are some security profiles that they need to go through so the 40 gate before the the traffic is sent out runs a few profile checks very similar to the employees who are who try to access the internet through the wi-fi you'll see here for example that in the security profiles that we added we've uh, blocked certain sub websites to maintain uh, employee access to the internet only to their uh, designated or desired sites finally for the remote server that is connected behind the switch uh, we've also added a firewall rule to be able to access the internet to be able to access the cloud applications that they need as well now oftentimes you would need to remotely access some of your servers for that you can assign a virtual ip which what we did right here actually you can see that we've assigned a virtual ip to the remote server so employees can access that remote server without being in the office in a secure fashion one more thing to talk about before i show how to access that server and do a small demo something very important to mention is automation now this is also a powerful configuration or a powerful tool that that 40 40 os has knock and sock people are always working hard sometimes 24 hour shifts to uh, to make to make sure that uh, traffic is uh, always traversing and uh, all of the security gaps are tightened but at the same time sometimes you you need something uh, to be automatically responding to a threat irrespective of how fast your knock and sock people are this is where the automation feature comes in so through automation you can define a trigger so in this case we've defined a trigger for compromised hosts with the 
compromised security rating as high. Now, anytime we see a high compromised host, we created an action to quarantine this device. So number one is you select the trigger that you want. Number two is you select the action that you want. And number three is the stitching, where you can stitch the trigger to the action exactly like you see over here. So something very simple to put together and it is very powerful because you are able to respond to threats in real time in an autonomous fashion up until your knock SOC engineers are able to go online and uh, do some remediation action. All right, so now once we've looked at the entire setup, let's go into the remote server that we applied just to see how we can RDP into something from the outside world and how we can only access the internet as long as you are part of the employees user group. So for this, we're just going to remote desktop into the IP that we've provided, into the virtual IP that we provided. And just like that, you should be able now to get to the remote server th themselves itself. And as we mentioned, you are only going to be able to access the internet after you identify yourself as an employee that is part of the employee's user group. So for example, from this remote server, you want to send your data to a, an inventory management site. Let's say it's NetSuite, for example. Now, before you are able to access your inventory management site, you would need to define or you would need to add your username and password as part of the employee's user group. So in this case, John will first enter their username and password. And after that, they will be able to go into their inventory management site and uh, look at their inventory or do whatever needs to be done. So this is the end of the video. Thank you for listening and have a good day.